Live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Hi, welcome to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with John Furrier. Day two of our coverage on theCUBE of Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Very excited to welcome to theCUBE one of this year's DevNet Creator Awards. We have Andra Alert, Digital Automation Practice Manager from Dimension Data. Andra, it's wonderful to have you join us. Hi, thanks for having me. So congratulations, this is breaking news for everybody, including <laughs> you, that you had just won the DevNet Creator Award. Tell us about how you're feeling since you just got that news. Well, in the same time, I feel excited, I feel honored, and I feel also humbled. It's, it's a big award to win, and I'm very proud that I can bring this, uh, this award back home to my, to my company. Did they tell you, this is only the second year that they've given out these awards, did they tell you some of the criteria? Because obviously, you were selected and were surprised to learn that today. Pretty cool surprise to have. But did they give you any context about who they're looking for? Like your activity in the DevNet community exactly. and things like that. Tell us a little bit about that. Exactly, so they are looking for um, the people who are having a great impact and who are great advocates of DevNet outside of the Cisco world. So when they are going to clients and when they are going to uh, the developer community in the different countries. So they are looking for advocates. They are also looking for people who are great contributors to the network. So if you have some very nice uh, code examples and you're posting them, on the code exchange. Um, so these are a couple of criteria that uh, they are following. Yeah. And how long have you been an active member of the DevNet community? Um, I'm quite a veteran. <laughs> I've been there since the very beginning of the DevNet. So actually before, before even the release, I already got a little bit of information that something uh, uh, in this direction will come. And then I was there um, from the very beginning. Um, the journey continued with being there at the first DevNet Express event, uh, being uh, now, for example, here at DevNet Create. Uh, last year, I've organized the first DevNet Express event at a partner, so uh, together with my company, with Dimension Data, we were organized the first DevNet Express event uh, in Frankfurt, where we have invited clients, but also a lot of people from our engineering teams. Um, so quite a fantastic journey until now with, uh, with DevNet, and I'm happy that I'm there since uh, so early. What's been the reaction so far to DevNet's growth and change? What's the biggest surprise or notable change with DevNet community? Um, there are a couple of things which are changing. So um, inside the company, for example, um, with, with the adoption of DevNet and with people going uh, very often on, on DevNet, we have seen a different style of learning. So uh, engineers now have a different way of how do I approach learning, uh, where do I go if I need to, to find something? And um, another change is related to how people interact with each other. Uh, because, yeah, you know, like the network engineer was there, he was doing very cool his stuff, maybe sometimes he was also sharing. But with DevNet, uh, the entire openness um, is now a standard. So people are sharing between uh, them, colleagues are also uh, taking on in, even internal um, uh, social media like Yammer and posting, hey look, I've done this cool stuff. And it's only, like, a lot of it, it's also thanks to DevNet because it, it brought a little bit a new style of being to, to And they bring teams. DevNet Create, which has got a cloud native mm -hmm. kind of mindset. How has that gone over with network engineers being coding, Python, machine learning, Meraki, new things are coming? So, um, they are all on a transformation path and uh, our company is doing a lot of um, activities in this direction. We've had, for example, last year, um, our, um, um, we have a, a very good advocate for coding at the Mission Data. His name is Anthony Shaw. He had last year an entire initiative running, Learn to Code. Um, and so we had uh, colleagues from all over the company, independently of the department you were from, which started to code. Right, so we had uh, we had them uh, learning how to code, and then this is uh, basically the very ba uh, fundament, uh, and you can directly start afterwards with learning pads in the in the DevNet. So it's quite a transformation, and I, I would say that uh, it's a nice journey to be on. And how have you guys, the gentleman that you just mentioned, and yourself, as <laughs> as you described, a veteran of the DevNet community? How have you guys maybe influenced to mention data to really fully embrace DevNet and the path? Um, I think there are two, um, two big um, uh, ways in which this has been done. 
So on one hand, um, Anthony Shaw with his uh, uh, very successful initiative, this has brought um, uh, the transformation from the learning side. And on the other hand, uh, by starting to have the skills, we have brought out the news to our clients. And so this has impacted uh, the business. And when the business is impacting, and when you show a business value by using automation, by using the network programmability, uh, then the entire company is aware. And this is how afterwards um, we started to, okay, we really embrace the challenge. You're really sort of changing the culture of dimension data in a good way. Um, yes, I wouldn't say it's it's totally changing, but uh, we see that um, we are very easily adapting to, to the new way. Talk about the automation piece. What do you do in your day-to-day -day job? Take us through day in the life of what you're doing, uh, what are the cool things you're doing, struggles, challenges, opportunities, what's the fun stuff, what's the not so fun stuff that software's automating away? Okay, very nice. So, um, on one hand, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, we analyze with our clients what they are doing and we are coming with suggestions where they could be faster and also we are coming with suggestions where they could reduce errors and so on. So basically we go, we talk to, we talk to our clients, we are coming back with the problems they have, we prepare for them a solution. Then afterwards this solution is mainly based on using uh, APIs. Um, Cisco APIs are also amongst our favorite. Um, once we are presenting the solution, then the clients are saying yes, it's something I would like to have in my network, or no, it's something I don't want. And then once the clients are happy with the solution that we are proposing them, then we start developing. We are um, developing in an agile methodology, so very close uh, touch yeah. with the client, uh, fail fast, uh, and improve and have a um, uh, very agile way of, of doing things. Uh, afterwards, once the project is done, you know we continue improving what we have with the customer, with the clients, and um, uh, continuing our journey from there. Uh, this is part of what a day in a software engineering department uh, looks like, or like in a net DevOps engineering department looks like. On top of this, we need all the time to take care of best practices. How do we code? We need to take care of being security compliant. Like working in Europe, you know we have a lot of uh, rules and regulations that we need to respect, and we are of some of these rules and regulations, we are very proud that they are there and they are there to protect us and to protect the data which sometimes belongs to us. So this is also a topic that um, we are uh, working on day to day. Afterwards, we are also working a lot in improving our skills. Uh, we are having a weekly bake and learn, for example, where someone is baking a cake, someone else is presenting a technical topic. So it's, it's an entire process, um, and these are all activities that we are running uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, one of the big trends was, going back 10 years, DevOps. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure as code, great, great, great trend. Now, net DevOps, you mentioned that term, mm -hmm. is about DevOps applied to networking. Mm -hmm. That's a big theme of DevNet and DevNet Create is programmable networks. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you when people say net DevOps? <laughs> it means a lot, it's very close to my heart. It's also the topic of my uh, presentation. Later today I have a speaker slot, a tech talk. Um, you know, net DevOps, a lot of people might think, okay, it's just some uh, network engineers who are writing some tumor scripts uh, uh, in the network. Well, it's not just that. It, it, it's a lot of components. It's also about the culture, it's about the people, it's about the processes that you're involving, it's about what tools you're using. So for me, the entire net DevOps is really close to my heart because it's an entire mindset which is which needs to How does someone learn about it? What do they, where should they go to learn about net DevOps? Uh, sorry, can you Where should me? people go to learn about um, how to do net DevOps, what it is, so best a practices? Very, a very good entry point, it's uh, the DevNet, right? You have there a lot of uh, learning uh, labs, you have the sandboxes, uh, you also have the tracks, so you can learn from there. And of course, you can you you go online. You have a lot of uh, courses. You have a lot of blogs. You have a lot of influencers who are posting uh, um, about what's what's going on and uh, um, what you should adapt in your network. Uh, then yes, you can also use some books. There are also some nice books there. Of course, you need to pay attention because by the time a book uh, is released, maybe that information could be deprecated. You know, yeah. like IT. Yeah. It runs quite fast, um, but definitely, definitely, it's the, one of the starting So I got to ask you a personal question. What's the coolest thing that's going on here at DevNet Create or within the industry that you're excited about? Um, machine learning and artificial intelligence is definitely something that I want to, to, to keep an eye on it uh, where I'm uh, running a couple of small tests. 
uh, it will definitely change the way we see the world and it will also uh, define what our kids will further learn. Because now you see like we, we are used to a certain way of learning which is there since maybe 200 years. This will have like machine learning and artificial intelligence will have such a big impact on everything we do um, that it will maybe be overwhelming. So it's a very interesting point that I'm uh, following here at the DevNet Korea. There are very nice talks. And you got to get the data to get the machine learning. You need data. Meraki's got great wireless. Wi-Fi 6 is here. Mm -hmm. IoT looking good. A lot of activity. Yes, it, it's indeed a lot of activity and uh, I'd like to believe that data is somehow the new gold or the new petroleum. Uh, so having a hand on the data is something that is valuable indeed. How have you found, if we look at you know, the, the participants that are here, we've got you know, developers, infrastructure folks who are moving towards adopting DevOps, kind of connecting them with the app developers. How have you seen people change, job roles change, as uh, these other folks are adopting DevOps, especially now mm -hmm. that you're talking about bringing in the network folks, how have you seen roles change, and how has your job in particular changed and advanced and evolved with the practice of net DevOps? Mm -hmm. So I will start with the first part of your question. Um, roles have indeed changed a lot, um, and this also um, I can see in the moment when we try to recruit, because there is no uh, profile out there that you say, okay, I want to recruit a net DevOps. You will not find on the market net DevOps uh, uh, already built as a profile. So you need to recruit people where you see the potential and uh, try to bring uh, these new colleagues into the net DevOps journey. So this is one part on how roles are evolving. And then very direct to myself, how my career has evolved. I think it's very linked to how the entire DevNet community has evolved. I've started five years ago at Imaginita and it was my first, um, um, let's say like, a big job in, in, in Germany. Um, and my career has um, evolved in a very rapid way. So I went from technology associate to system engineer, design engineer, then leading a team of um, a software, well, net DevOps engineers. And now I'm, uh, since a couple of weeks, working for the um, uh, Europe region um, at Dimension Data to advocate and to create a strategy for net DevOps as a, as a practice. And so what would you recommend to the younger generation? Because you were saying, well, we can't hire for someone that has net DevOps experience. What are some of the skills, maybe even some of the softer skills, like being a good collaborator, being a good communicator, that you would recommend that the younger generation really fine tune in addition to their technology expertise that you think this is going to make someone really gets this, mm -hmm. this role and can help really transform it. Mm -hmm. So I think um, outside of all the technical skills that they can acquire in terms of okay, uh, programming, uh, networking, and so on, there are two big soft skills that they should have and in my opinion it's something very important, it's something I'm looking at every uh, person I'm interviewing. Uh, these two are curiosity. You need to be curious about what's out there. If you're not curious, you cannot evolve. And the second one is learnability. Even if you don't know something, you still you say, okay, I don't know it, but I will go, go and learn about it. You know, like, we are learning every day something. You're like, what was there five years ago and what was there two years ago? It's different to what we have now. Um, and so learnability and curiosity are the two main topics for me. Fantastic. Well, Andre, again, congratulations <laughs> on winning the DevNet Creator Award this year, 2019. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We look forward to seeing more great things that you do in the DevNet community <laughs> in the next year. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching us live on theCUBE's second day of coverage of Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Thanks for watching.